four. Perfect. Okay. So good morning, my darlings. It's 1144 in the morning and I kind of wanted to hop on and um, I'm going to be doing a basic makeup tutorial, kind of like a real quick out the door look. I think, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll decide as we go. Um, I am doing this while streaming live to Twitch, which is another social networking platform. Um, and so if I interact with viewers, that is why. Um, so I've got my mirror. I've got the light as about as good as I'm going to get the light um, in my house at the moment because of the way the desk is set up. I don't have a backdrop right now, so you can see uh, my house and my new tablecloth that I'm going to be putting on for spring. Um, and so let's kind of get this started. We're going to have some fun. Um, I think I need to make my window a little bit bigger. based. So the next step is, as always, to put on primer. Um, so this is a foundation primer. I do use both a foundation primer and an eye primer. Um, the foundation primer I'm using is by Mary Kay. It's got SPF 15 in it. SPF is definitely a thing you need, especially where I live, um, because sun rays and skin cancer do not sound fun. So I usually take just like a little squeeze. Sorry, I reclosed all of my things immediately after. So I usually take just about that much, and that's probably a little bit extra, but I also have a tendency to bring my primer uh, down my neck a little bit. And I always start in the center of my face. And kind of go forehead, eyebrows. And so one of the things with primer, and there's the rest of my neck and my chin. And we're going to kind of give that a couple of seconds to like do its thing. Um, I'm going to tell you guys now, I don't know why I'm using that voice. I'm going to tell you guys now, um, my beauty blender is drying because I washed it this morning because it was looking icky and it's not dry yet. So I'm going to be putting on some CC cream, but I'm going to be using my fingers too, which is perfectly fine with CC cream. Um, the next thing I'm going to put on is eye primer. I always, always, always recommend using eye primer. It has so many benefits. Again, I'm using Mary Kay. I absolutely adore Mary Kay. Most of the products I use are Mary Kay. Um, I am a Mary Kay consultant uh, with the quarantine. I haven't been working it that much and I don't, you don't need a lot, you guys. You really don't need a lot. Um, and I'm saying this because I want to be like fully forthright and coming. Uh, forth I don't think I'm saying that right. Uh, point being, Mary Kay products are products that you can only get. Hang on, my music turned off. Um... Mary Kay products are a product that you can only get through a consultant. Um, and so if you see something you like, or if you see something and you like the way it's working, uh, you can go to marykay.com and look up a consultant near you. Uh, one second here. And I always use my ring finger. Like I might blend it a little bit with my middle finger, but I mostly use my ring finger for applying anything that needs to be applied to my eyes because it's got the least strength so it's going to be the least damaging to your eye area. Hang on. And I'm not like blending it in, I'm just kind of applying it. And I do apply it on my lower eye as well because sometimes you put eye makeup down there and you want it to stay and have that nice pop that eye primer gives. Um, I am one of those people that I do my eye makeup before my face makeup. Um, some people think it's weird. It just fallout bugs me. So now that we've got the primer on, we're going to kind of let that sit for a couple of seconds while I get out my cream eye color. Um, again, this is Mary Kay. Hang on. Hang on. I, I'm... There we go. Mary Kay. Mary Kay. And it is in Beach Blonde. And I like using Beach Blonde because it doubles for so many things. You can use it as a highlighter. You can use it as an eyeshadow base. You, there's literally so many things. Um, 
I actually just on my business page did a tips and tricks about this this morning, about using it in place of an eye primer in a pinch, but because we have eye primer um, and we just put it on, we're just going to put this on top of it because I do actually want to use this. I like using this as a base color. Um, I also feel like it helps blend things out. Um, I apply my cream eyeshadow with a brush um, because I have nails and I don't want to poke myself in the eye. When applying eyeshadow and using your brush, you want to put you want to bear in mind that wherever you put your brush is going to be where the most pigment shows up. So I always start in the center of my eye and work my way out to the outer V and then in to the inner V. And I do a little bit of blending right here in the actual crease. Now the crease is, bear in mind you, um, where I'm just going to keep playing through things. Uh, the crease is when you put your brush on your eyelid and you open your eye and it goes into the crease. It's in your eye socket. And the reason you want to stay in there is because you don't want the product so high that there's no room between your product and your eyebrow. Um, generally, I put product on both sides of my brush. Um, I'm not going to right now. I kind of put it in like so. I do, if I feel like I've got a little bit too much, I'll like rub it off on the side. And again, center of the eye, let's do this, center of the eye, out toward the outer corner, and toward the inner corner. And you'll notice when you put that eye primer on that there's going to be some gripping. That's fine. That's what that eye primer is meant to do. It's supposed to help your product stay in place. I don't know why I'm not just using my little compact instead of like trying to use a mirror that's like way far away from my face. I'm going to update this a little bit. So I will be putting this up on my YouTube channel. Um, my YouTube channel, guys, is going to be kind of a lot of things. Um, I enjoy sewing. Uh, there will be makeup tutorials. There will be like outfit of the days. There's going to be like if I find products, trying new products, um, whether or not I feel like products are worth trying. Um, sometimes I will get a new product and I'll try it and I'll tell you whether I like it or not. Um, and it won't necessarily be a makeup product. It might be. Sorry, um, it might be skincare, it might be perfume, it might be lotion, it might be clothing. It's going to be just kind of a, a hodgepodge of a lot of things put on my eye. Because um, sometimes what I'll do is I will take like the Chroma Fusion blushes and use them as an eyeshadow. And they're really pretty and it's definitely a thing you could do. I'm just trying to decide if that's what I want to do today. Or if I want to go more like neutral. Actually, I think what we're going to do, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play. We're just going to play around a little bit. So now that we've got the beach blonde on, what we're going to do is we're going to take not an eye crease brush. We're going to go ahead and take the Mary Kay all over eyeshadow brush. Come on. There we go. Um, it's kind of fluffy. It's got relatively packly dense brushes. And... I'm using these four eyeshadows right now. They were in my fall uh, petite. They're just some that I like to keep on hand. Um, I do have more eyeshadows. These are just the ones that I keep like, this is going to sound hilarious, but these are the ones I keep in my purse to like touch up my makeup. Um, cause most of these colors I can use to touch up even if, um, they aren't the color I was originally wearing. And so what I'm going to take is I'm going to use, I'm actually going to pull it off so I can tell you what color it is. Oh, hello. Okay. I'm going to be using golden peach. The color, the names are printed on the back. So I'm kind of terrible. I have to pick it up to figure out the color. And I just get a little bit of that on my brush. I always tap off the excess. And what I'm going to do is kind of line out. I'm doing just kind of a basic casual makeup look and recording it for my other channel. And listening to my neighbor's kids have a ton of fun in the backyard. Um, what I'm doing currently is I'm taking the golden peach and I'm kind of lining out where I want the darker shadow to go to kind of give me 
um, an easier way to fade it out because putting a lighter color on top of a dark color to blend it out is a lot more difficult than like layering the darker color up. Oh, thank you. Um, I do bring the color all the way down to the internal eye, but I follow the crease to do it. And give me just a second. I need more color. And I do also tend to bring, I'm bringing the golden peach into the eyelid a little bit. Because I'm going to be using it as part of the look later. So I'm trying to bring it about halfway in. So if I look straight forward, I want to bring it right about here on the lid. And then I want it to go follow the rest of my crease the rest of the way down. Now this is not a crease brush, so this is not necessarily designed to do this, but it's working pretty well. Um, and again, you always, it's easier to start with a little bit of color and build your way up. You can always add more. You cannot take it away without having to take off the entire eye. And so I'm just kind of patting it on and building it up because I want that nice peachy pink color. And then I do take a little bit just on the very tip of the brush and run it right under my lower lash line. Which you guys can't see. I'm sorry, you guys can't see that. So right under the lower lash line. Um, I'm new to tutorials, so you'll have to bear with me. I'm also really blind, so I'm accustomed to putting the mirror here. I'm going to make, I just realized I need to make like a conscious note of not doing that. Um, and so now I need to make this eye attempt to match this eye. And one of the things that I constantly say is your eyes are sisters, not twins, just like your eyebrows. If you try and make them match perfectly, it's just not going to happen. I don't really have a plan in mind for this. I'm just kind of like going, sorry. Okay. And outer corner and crease. Had to make it so you guys can see what I'm doing, but also so I can see what I'm doing. Maybe I should use my bigger mirror. Hey, let me try the bigger mirror and see if that helps. Wait, I still need that open. You too can do this. Okay, we're going to try a bigger mirror and see if that helps. Okay, mirror down here. Camera there. Make sure everyone can see everything. And bring it on my eyelid. Or about center. Okay. Now, we will all find that we have one eye that is awesome and one eye that is a pesky little devil. Um, and sometimes they switch. Sometimes one eye requires more pigment than the other to kind of match what you're doing. Um, like as you notice, this one's kind of like a little bit darker. This one's more peachy, so I'm going to have to layer it up some more. Um, but this one doesn't like to take the shape as well. So we're going to just kind of work on layering. And again, we're just blending that. Starting another song. And I decided to pull the peach all the way into my inner corner on the lower lash line, um, just because. Okay, and so now that we've got the golden peach on, uh, what I want to do is we're going to give it a little bit of dimension. So we're going to take the eye crease brush, again by Mary Kay. You guys are going to get really annoyed at me saying Mary Kay because I kid you not, like... 80 to 90 percent of my products are Mary Kay. So you'll probably get really annoyed at hearing me say Mary Kay. I promise there will be some tutorials that I do that don't involve Mary Kay. 
Um, but a majority of my products are Mary Kay products. Anyways, so taking the eye crease brush, come on, here we go. And we're going to, I learned this lesson this morning. Keep it shut to show. Uh, we're taking the Mary Kay Chroma Fusion uh, in, ah, ah, oh, come on, in Wineberry. And it looks like this. It's kind of like a um, Merlot winey color. And we're taking just a bit on, like, on the end bristles. We're not going on the sides of these bristles because we just want it on the end. But you want a good amount on the end. So you're going to swipe it a couple of times, tap off the extra. And what we're going to do is follow our lower lash line. I'm going to actually use a different brush, otherwise I'm going to end up with Wineberry on me. So what you want to do, and I'll see if I can do this without my mirror, is I'm going to, I'm going with kind of a cat eye shape. And the easiest way to achieve a cat eye shape, let me get some more music going here for you guys. Is, let's do this one instead, is to take long straight object, most handy would be a brush, place it against your nose, line it up with your lower uh, lash line and connect it to the tip of your eyebrow and that should give you the shape you need and then you take this, oh, this doesn't work. I'm gonna have to get real close to you guys for a second and that should give you you just follow that brush and that should give you the angle that you need I bring it down to my lower lash a little bit but that gives you the trajectory that you need your lash, your line to go. And what I like to do is before I even do any kind of blending is attempt to, nope, hang on, there we go. Attempt to make them line up again, lower lash line a little bit, a little bit more. And again, you can always add more. It's really hard to take it away. But as you can see, now I've got my two trajectories. So you can put your other brush down and you're gonna take a light tapping, tap off the extra. And from the trajectory that you just laid out on your eye, you want to, again, in the crease, follow your crease inward. And I do this really slowly because I wear contacts and if I go too quickly, I drop my contact all out of place. And so again, in the crease. And just kind of, you want it to look like one fluid motion. You don't want it to look like there's an X there or a V or a triangle or what have you. And again, remember your eyes are sisters, not twins. You will notice I have one that is very prominent and one that is less so. And I can try and make them match, but more than likely what's going to happen is I'm going to use a secret little magic erasure trick that I know that's going to minimize this right here. Um, you can also just kind of take your finger and blend it inward a little bit to eliminate a little bit of that like way out there. Um, now the reason my eyes do this and a lot of people's eyes do this is because I'm one of those mystical magical people in the world that has two different shaped eyes. I got one of my mom's eyes and one of my dad's eyes. But see just like just kind of rubbing it a little bit but even because of the natural shadow of my eye you're gonna see it it's gonna look a little odd so I bring the color in a little bit sorry you need to be able to see this get real close so you can see and I'm not really doing a smoky eye I'm just kind of doing a really casual kind of pink spring eye.
And what I'm going to bring it in, do is bring it in a little bit, about maybe a third of the way in. Uh, just so that there's some dimension and some layering of color. Not all the way over that peach. And you want to pat it on. Don't worry about blending just yet. I am not using a whole lot, but thank you. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of tapping it on. And once I feel like I've got the amount of color I want, I'm going to switch to, if I can find it, give me two seconds, because I apparently don't have the brush I need. So I'm going to use a wet and wild brush. And it's just a basic fluffy blending brush. And it looks, it's stained. The top is supposed to be pink, but I've used it for Halloween a couple of times, so it's no longer pink. And you're just going to take that clean brush and blend. My favorite blending motion is this windshield wiper motion. Make sure you start in your crease. Like, the brush needs to be in your crease. Because that product has to blend out from there. So you want to make sure it's evenly distributed, because you don't want harsh lines. And then we're going to switch eyes. Now, one of the main reasons I say to stick in your crease is because you notice, even though I'm blending, I've got a nice soft line, but there's still space between the color and my eyebrow. Um, on this side as well, there's space between the color and my eyebrow. Because if you start too high up, you're going to blend right into your eyebrow. And that's not a thing anybody wants to do. Trying to make sure you guys can still see. Okay. Um, do I want to add what I'm then going to do now that we've got that part done? Um, I don't want to add any more dark, any more pink. What I am, however, going to do is add a little bit of pressed powder um, to the very top just because, or do I want to use candlelight? Hang on checking what color this is in two seconds. Tuffy. Actually, yes. Okay. So I'm going to go back in with the, where did it go? I had it just a second ago. That's not it. I literally just had the brush. Ah, I'm going to go back in with the all over shadow brush and pick up a little bit of the Mary Kay Chroma Fusion Toffee Shadow. This one picks up a whole lot at once, so you definitely want to tap it off. And I'm going to put it just in the inner third of my eye. Okay, maybe the inner half. Because I like having dual colors. And again, picks up a whole lot, so you want to tap off excess because you don't want a ton. And then just tap it on halfway in your eye on your eye not in your eye clearly only go up to the crease now see it doesn't it didn't do like a whole lot but it just kind of lightened the whole look up again take your blending brush and blend the top of it and where it meets the wine berry because you don't want again harsh lines and so you want to make sure everything's just kind of like mm, that's not blending the way I want it hang on we go. Um, another, other people like to use like circular motions. I feel like circular, circular motions feel weird on my eye. There we go. Ta-da. And so that's what I'm going to do for the eye shadow itself. <sighs> um, I like to use eyeliner. I like to add eyeliner to almost anything. 
Um, I use pen liquid liner. Um, and today I'm going to use the Mary Kay liquid eye pen. This is not their waterproof one. This is just their regular one. Um, because I don't feel like it needs to be waterproof because I'm not going like out and about today. Um, and what I do for my liquid liner, put my lid down. I do pick up my little mirror. I look down again, envisioning that shape that we were referring to earlier. I try to follow like my eye makeup. I just pull it out a little bit. I'm not even going to do like a huge, huge wing. Just pull it out a little bit. And then from the, where you stopped, drag it down. One of my favorite YouTubers has a saying that I absolutely adore is swish, um, swish, drag, and hope for best. <laughs> I'm a little more OCD than that. And something I have learned is it's a whole lot easier to get a nice line by making small interconnecting lines. Don't try and do the whole thing at once. Don't pull on your eye. Just do small interconnecting lines. Kind of like if you're drawing. It's like drawing on your eye. I look down because that way I can get like super close to my lashes. And I like it that way. And then just fill in this teeny tiny little flick you made. I don't do liner on the bottom part of my eye. I don't do black liner down there. At least not when it's not when it comes to this look. There are some looks that I do. This look is not one of them. I don't feel like it needs it. So again, line up, look down, pull your thing out a little bit. And so swish, drag down to your eye. And then what I do is I start from the inner corner and small interconnecting lines. And if you look down, you can kind of see where it's going and what it's going to look like. Once I've completed it, sometimes I'll go over it if I really want it pigmented for one smooth line. But it's not very often. I did today because I felt like it. But you also notice my eyes are not agreeing with me. Hang on. This one needs to be a little bit bigger. I am OCD. It will drive me up a wall if they are not like somewhat the same. Okay, there we go, much better. And then, once you've got your liner done, um, I don't recommend doing, my brain just froze, mascara just yet because we do have to still do like our face powders. And if you do mascara before you do your face powders then your mascara gets all like powder-y and that's not a fun thing. So what I'm going to do next is get out my eyelash squisher. I should have gotten all of this out before I did this, but I am new to this, so bear with me. Yeah, that's what I mean. Okay. And so I got out my squisher and my eyelash primer. Then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wear some CC cream today because I'm not really like going out, out um, but I still want to have a little bit of extra moisture. I think, I think this one's almost empty, so I've got this one just in case. Um, they're both the Mary Kay CC cream in, oh come on, very light because I am very pale. And I just put a little bit, if I have any in here, squish, 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 squish. I just put a little bit. That one apparently is empty, so we're going to have to use the other one. Um, on my fingers. This stuff really does not take a lot. The thing I love about using CC creams is you can build it up from like minimal coverage to like full, full coverage if you need full, full coverage. I'm just kind of bebopping around the house today. I might get back on and stream a little bit of magic later, um, but 
I don't need full, full coverage. Again, you want to start in the center of your face and move outward because just like every product, it needs to have somewhere to blend to. Um, normally, I use a beauty blender for this. My beauty blender is still wet, like really wet from me washing it. And I don't want to use it until the sanitizer has dried. Let me tilt my mirror, hang on. And the really nice thing about this is it does shade match. And I bring it down my neck a little bit. And um, I'm probably not going to do any concealer like under my eyes today because I don't think I need it. Um, I used some eye cream earlier, which helped with the darkness and the puffiness of my eyes. I am, however, going to do a little bit of contour um, and a little bit of light powder. Um, I start with the light powder. I want my... This is my great big all over powder brush. See, it just says powder on it. Maybe if I can get it to come on. Murph. Ha ha, powder. Um, and then I'm just using out of my compact, using this, which is the lightest shade of pressed powder Mary Kay has available. Um, as you can see, I use it a lot. And then I just kind of go over where you would do like your highlight. Kind of on your upper cheeks. Oh, like this works pretty well. I do my nose as well because my nose likes to eat makeup. So I really like to use this in kind of my T-zone area. It brightens up my face a little bit. And then... Um, as much as I love Mary Kay, they don't really have a contour color that works for me. Um, right now what I'm using is this e.l.f. contour. Um, it pretty much, it pretty well works for my color. Um, my makeup, my music went away. Music. Um, I just use like, and I don't even use a whole lot. I just use a teeny tiny bit, tap off the extra. And then I have like a natural line right there that I have a tendency to follow. I don't know if you can see it. Get my hair out of the way. Really hard to find it on camera. I try not to go in further than like the edge of my eye. I'm going to blend it more later. Again, just a little bit. Tap off the extra. Oh, come on. Get my hair out of there. You know, the ears are supposed to help with the getting the hair out of there. I just realized I tried to go the wrong direction. I do also do along my jaw. Like every day. <laughs> every day I do along my jaw. And then I just kind of blend it down. Sometimes I feel like doing a little douche douche on my chin. I promise you guys these will get more fun as soon as I get more comfortable with being in front of the camera. And then I take that all over powder brush again and just blend the heck out of it. Here we go. I don't do too much more than that because I don't feel like I need a whole lot of contouring. I just had my blush like two seconds ago. Um, I do use a little bit of blush because I'm very white and well, I'm very pale and I need a little bit of color. I'm going to use Rosy Nude. And again, if you guys like any, oh, come on. See, Rosy Nude. If you guys like anything you see, you can get it from a consultant. I don't use a whole lot, my brush. I just kind of like right over where I put the contour, like not like on top of the contour, but like right above the contour and just a little bit and blend it. And again, right above the contour. 
and blend it. And then what I do, because I'm extra and I love purple, is I have this Maybelline Master Holographic. I had I got it for my wedding and I fell in love with it so much that I've used it pretty much constantly since. Um, I like to pick up a fair bit amount because I feel like it doesn't have a whole lot of payoff, tap off the extra, and all over. I take it up here. Like if I could highlight my entire face without looking weird, I would. I love highlight. And the front of my nose. Sorry. <laughs> And what I might even do, just because I'm feeling a little bit extra today, is take one of my old eye crease brushes that looks like this and kind of just pick up a little bit of this. Not a whole lot. Go right here, just because I feel extra today. Um, one of the last things I do, y'all, is my brows. And I've been putting, I, I, because I'm not good at them. I have, like, two very opposite brows, as I'm sure you can see. Um, I'm using the e.l.f. brow pencil, which has a spoolie on the end. Uh, this is in taupe. I don't know how to, like, make it focus on this. Come on, focus. It is in taupe. It is elf. So the first thing you do, I do need my mirror for this, is you kind of brush your hairs up. So they're all going in the same direction. And then like right over the top of them to kind of give you a good line. And then I don't do a whole lot of shaping with my brows. I'm really lucky in the fact that I have kind of naturally dramatic brows. Well, I don't know if I'd call them, like, dramatic, dramatic, but I have naturally awesome brows. I love them. Um, to do your brow, though, what you do is you're supposed to, the front of it is supposed to line up with the tip of your nose. So make a little mark across your pupil. Make a little mark. That's where your arch should be. And out the same line as what we did for our cat is where your tail should be. Well, not our cat, but our cat eye. And I'm just going to make those marks on either side and then you just fill them up i don't like i said i don't do a whole lot of shaping go in short strokes i have a tendency to bring mine out just a little bit um because i feel like it I feel like it frames my face better to bring it out a little bit because mine stop a little bit before the end of my eye. Did I just put, oh no, that's a brush, brush, brush. And when it comes to your brows, I mean, what you want to do is up to you. I recommend using a color that's the same color as your natural roots. There are a few exceptions there. Now, if you are like, hi. Um, there are a few exceptions. If you have like dyed red hair, you want to use a red brow. If you're wearing, well, I mean, realistically, you can do whatever you want. I recommend doing something that matches hello, the natural color of your roots. Um, that was the wrong end of that. After I've drawn them, I then take the spoolie again. I am doing wonderful. How are you? And I kind of run it through that. It kind of fades it a little bit and makes it look a little bit more natural as opposed to like, oh, awesome. Well, white-ish. Um, as you can tell, this is the one that has not yet been spoolied. This is the one that's been spoolied. This one looks a little bit more natural. <laughs> Uh, and so now I'm going to spoolie this one. I feel like everybody's been bored lately 
oh yeah, everybody, like, this outbreak is taking a toll on everybody. But I mean, it's definitely brought out the creativity in some people. And I tell myself every morning, because I am a perfectionist, I have OCD, it drives me nuts. They are sisters, not twins. Sisters, not twins. Sisters, not twins. Or else if they're forever messing with them. Okay. The last thing that I do is you want to do some all over powder. And you're just going to take your big fluffy powder brush. And just put that everywhere. And my music stopped. <laughs> Thank you. I love, love, love my kitty ears. I wear them a lot. I love wearing them when I'm doing my makeup or washing my hair. They keep my hair, or not my hair. Wow, I don't wear them when I'm washing my hair. I love that. I wear them when I'm washing my face. Um, because it just kind of makes life a little bit easier. All right, so now that we have put on our powder, um, the last things to do is our lips and our lashes. Um, I don't wear falsies all the time. Sometimes I do, but one thing I always start out with when it comes to lashes is this terrifying lash crimper curler thing and you want to get it close enough sorry I, I like using the mirror for this bit um to get at the base you can get a nice curl oh it's wonderful to meet you too um and I usually sit there and count out uh, to 20 or you can sing happy birthday in your head um the reason I like using the mirror for this is because if you get too close to your eye you're going to pinch your eyelid and it hurts like a son of a gun But if you don't get close enough, you just curl the very, very tips, and it looks really, really weird. Mascara, just kind of an update for you guys. Um, I use this one, and then I use the Lash Intensity. I like this one. It's just kind of a basic coat to kind of separate my lashes a little bit. Oh, awesome. I am hopefully after this going to try and edit this so that this goes a little bit faster. And then this is my lash intensity because it is amazing. And the reason I absolutely adore this, give me a second, let me put it on. And I'm almost out of it. Fun tip, when it comes to putting on mascara, Heat it up. So like rub it in your hands, hold it in your elbow, kind of like heating up your eyeliner, heat up your mascara and it'll apply creamier and smoother. Thing to do is our lips and I've been thinking about it and I think I'm going to go with rose, which is more of a neutral as opposed to like a, oh, thank you for the follow gaming beast. Uh, the rose is more of a neutral as opposed to like a red red, just because I feel like a red red might be just a little Thank you. I feel like a red red might be just a little too much with this look. Mm. So here's my problem is I absolutely adore red lips. Um, I will wear them with everything. So you know what? We're going to do a red lip. Because we're doing a red lip, we're going to do, do a darker liner. This liner is in the color, the color is not on it. Oh, it's in berry. And again, I need to pick up my mirror because this is not something I can do in that camera. So a trick that I always do when lining your lips <laughs> is, again, just like with your eyeliner, short interconnecting strokes. I really like accentuating my cupid's bow. So that is always the first thing I line. And I have naturally very full lips. So I have kind of like a mini Cupid's bow on my lower lip.
and I like to play that too. And some people, after they've lined their lips, they fill them in with a liner. Um, I'm not going to today just because the lip liner is darker than the lippy I'm going to put on. And I really want that red to, like, pop out. This is Cherry. Like, literally, the name of this product, the, well, the color name is Cherry. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Um, this is another one of those products you want to start out with a little bit and layer it on because it, it it's a buildable product. If you it, again, you can always add more. You can't take it away. Well, you can. It just is a pain in the patootie. And I have a tendency to go right up to and on the line that I just made. And then I'm going to do this again. And because I like it really, really red. Um, all right, y'all, so this is the finished look. Um, I don't have the ability to do sexy slow mos so I guess I'll just kind of give you a couple of different views of it. Um, it was wonderful chatting with you. I expect to see more from me in the future. As always, my darlings, be kind to one another and be the change you want to see in the world. And I will happily look forward to seeing you later.